All right, what's going on YouTube? Early morning lift with Aiden. We're gonna be doing a pool day. And so I'm gonna do this video a little bit different. I'm going to, I'm gonna run through my entire workout, do that with him, not record any of the sets, just kind of really lock in and focus in. Maybe record some of the sets, but really lock in for the most part. And then at the end, I'm gonna take you guys through um, just the movements that I deem essential for my pool day. And uh, yeah, also it's really cold. So if you hear the shakiness in my voice, it's because my car has not yet warmed up. But the gym is so close now that it doesn't really warm up before I get to the gym. So that's a downside. That's a downside of it being closer, but it's not a bad downside. Cold really wakes you up sometimes. I ran out of pre yesterday, so I don't have any. So I'm gonna be going pre-less, and that's okay, right? Take a break from it, probably a good thing. Yeah, so we're gonna be hitting pool session today. Uh, not like swimming, but like pulling movements. As you know, yoink day. If we did yeet day, which is push day, then it's yoink day. Um, I always feel like too, when I am recording while I'm driving like this, with like it on the stand, that I feel like I'm in an episode of Cops, right? You ever see those episodes where they like, they log on and they're like, yeah, I'm Officer Suarez. Uh, yeah, so we, uh, we got a 1092. Like, that's what I feel like when I, especially at night, right? Like, I feel like Cops doesn't happen a lot during the day. It's always like the night. So I got the little light on and all that stuff, but. Which I don't know. I don't know if anybody else is like this. Were you, when you were a kid, did you think it was illegal or did your parents tell you it was illegal to have the dome light on while you drove and that you'd get pulled over? Like that's totally a lie, that's totally a myth. I don't know why I believe that. And I think that was a, a much more common thing to believe than just me. Now maybe I'm wrong, but leave in the comments if you thought that was illegal when you were a kid. Thankfully it's not because I don't have to purchase a light to record this video, even though a better light would be much more nice. Much more nice? It'd be nicer, yeah. All right, we're gonna jump to the workout portion, um, which will be like probably like hour and a half from now. So hopefully I'll be a little bit more perked up by then. So let's get to the lift and the essential pool day movements. All right guys, so I just got done with my workout with Aiden. Um, lo and behold, I have not perked up still, but that's okay. We're still gonna share this content. So basically, um, there's there's a couple different movements that I wanna share with you guys that I think will help you grow your back, um, not just width, but thickness, and then also grow your biceps. Um, there's also a shoulder component to this, which you could also call back. So essentially, we're gonna be targeting the, the, the middle back, the lats, then biceps, and then rear delts for our, our pool day movements. And so I wanna take you through these. It won't be the full exercise slot to failure like I've done in the past for these couple videos. That's just, it's a one-off thing that I'm trying here, so bear with me. But um, yeah, so let's get to those exercises. We're gonna start with a barbell Smith machine um, row, right? Barbell Smith machine row, and then we'll go from there. So let's get after it. All right, so I lied. We're gonna do a barbell row. We're not gonna do a Smith & Machine row. Um, I think this will be really beneficial for a lot of beginners and even people who are intermediate that are trying to just gain overall mass and strength. So we're gonna load this up with a couple things and then I'll just go through a couple cues that are gonna make sense for you as you perform this movement. Just put your thumbs on. You want your arms to be like shoulder width apart and then you're gonna pull it out. I'd say drop it to the floor. Right, like you're about to do a deadlift and then you wanna keep your back straight, your lats engaged. So you wanna think about screwing your arms into the bar and then you wanna pull straight up through your back, right? You can have a little bit of play on your arms but you wanna pull straight up. You don't want your arms out here. That doesn't make sense, that's gonna hurt. So you want it to be at a 45 degree angle when you pull and uh, it'll come straight up to your chest. So it'll look like this. You want to make sure you're prioritizing controlling the weight as you go up and down and there's gonna be moments where 
you fail because either the weight's too heavy or you're too fatigued. And so given my circum cir circumstances right now, I'm definitely fatigued. So this feels a lot heavier than what it should. But I think that gives you a good idea of how those reps are supposed to look. Um, you wanna make sure, remember, your arms aren't straight out this way. That's gonna be terrible for your shoulders. You kinda of wanna have that 45 degree angle bent in your arms as you're pulling. And you know, if you've ever done cable rows before, you know that you have, you don't come out here like this. You come in at a 45 degree angle. And so it's the same thing with these compound movements with the barbell. So you're gonna do that. That'll be the, the first movement that you run, right? So you're wanting to prioritize this. Now, the, the nice part about this is this, this hits a lot of different parts of your back. You know, if you're engaging properly, if you're feeling the, the proper amount of tension on your back, then you're gonna feel this in your rear delts. You're gonna feel this in your lats. You're gonna feel this in your middle back. Um, you're gonna feel a lot of movement through your scapula. Um, you know, this, this is all around just a great back exercise for thickness especially. Not necessarily as much width, but thickness, you know, front to back instead of, you know, width. So anyway, all right, we'll move on to the next movement and we'll go from there. It's a little busier in here today, so I'm trying to be respectful of every space. So you're seeing these weird, unique angles. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm able to get the content still well, you know, not being a jerk. So anyway, next movement is a lat pull down now. You can do this in a ton of different variations. You can do single lat arm pull downs. Um, you can do, you know, the long bar. Uh, lat pull downs where you go really wide or really narrow. What I have right now is a variation of like a, a hand grip, like a, a vertical hand grip, which you'll see in a second. And I love this variation because I feel it in my lats a lot more than just the bar. Um, what I feel on my lats even more is a mag grip, which is very close as you pull in. But um, I wanted to give you guys an in-between of, you know, the standard, you know, bar that you see on a lat machine or a lat cable machine. I'm gonna do a couple reps of these and then kind of walk you through the cues that I think through as I make that lift. So you wanna make sure that your scapula, your shoulders are pulled up first and then down. You pull them down into your back and then you all the way to your chest. You're not moving the weight back like this. You're not doing those exaggerated movements. You are pulling your scapula down and then you are pulling and you are not using momentum to guide your strength. You're not using momentum to give you an extra assist until the very end, right? Like you don't, you don't want to be starting out with momentum. You want to save that for your cheat reps or your partials at the end. Um, yeah, you don't, you, want, you don't want to start out with momentum movements like that. So clean, and if you need to, you can at the top of every rep, readjust your scapula, pull down, so that you are ensuring that you're actually getting tension in your lat every single time. So what I love to do there is I just love to have, um, once again, a deep stretch at the top and, and the eccentric portion of the movement. Yeah, like just like that slow, that slow stretch to the top. Um, and then a squeeze at the bottom portion of the movement. You know, I'm really squeezing into my lats. Now, for me, I have a hard time feeling my lats, as you've seen in the other video probably. So this movement helps with my upper lat, but my lower lat, it's not the greatest. And so you might be in that same boat too, which um, I'll make a separate video about um, the other movement my buddy Grant taught me, um, even though it's in a couple videos back, you can go find that. But um, yeah, so this, this is a standard lat pull down movement that you should incorporate. It's essential to a good pull day. It's essential to making sure that you're not only building back thickness, but back width. Um, that's a lat pull down. The movement that I love to run for biceps, it's gonna sound lame, it's gonna sound simple, but it is just a dumbbell curl, right? Now, in, in a couple other videos, you've seen me incorporate the incline dumbbell curl mixed with a hammer curl. Amazing superset. I think that that is a great implementation into your pool day. But if you're just trying to keep it simple, if you're trying to grow mass in a very practical, real, and time-effective way, then curls are some of your most effective weapons and tools in that battle to gain mass. And so, um, you know, go to failure. This, once again, you're gonna hear me say it all the time, push every set till failure. 
push every rep out that you possibly can even if you're doing cheap swings at the end of it or partials don't start that way but at the end of it you know you can you can play around with some of that so I'm just going to demonstrate you know proper curl form and all that stuff here um, and we're going to go from there It's really, it's really that simple. You're gonna do those curls and you're gonna do them until failure. One thing I like to do with my curls is I like to tell myself that for every single set, I'm gonna do 25. I'm gonna do 25 uh, and I'm gonna do four sets. So trying to really rep out 100 in a span of four sets. Now, starting off, you might not be able to get to that. You might be able to get to 16, that's okay. Do as many sets as it takes to get to 100, but push to failure every single time. Like you want to make your muscle have a reason to grow. It needs to have stimulus that says, okay, in order to get past this hump, in order to get past this barrier, I'm gonna need to grow. I'm gonna need to get stronger. And, um, and then you go from there and then you start putting weight on and you start putting muscle on. and you're eating good food and you're eating, you know, you're eating carbs and protein and good fats and then before you know it, you added five pounds of muscle in, you know, seven weeks. That's huge. Um, maybe not seven weeks. It might take longer for some, shorter for others, but um, this is a great spot to start with your bicep movements. All right, so I said this in the push day video last time, um, but I like to incorporate legs in every push and pull day because I wanna try to grow my legs um, by training them at least two times a week and definitely pushing for that three time a week mark. And so um, I love to incorporate hamstring curl because it is a pulling movement. Now, not every gym has a laying hamstring curl. That's okay, most gyms have a seated hamstring curl. So. You could do the laying hamstring curl like I'm about to show you here if you have it. If not, go to a seated hamstring curl and play around with both, right? Like don't just don't just say, oh, Eddie told me to do laying, so I'll do laying. Like try both, see which one is more effective. I know some people who they can't get on the laying hamstring, hamstring machine because their lower back feels too much tension in that. I know some people who feel like they can't get a good stretch because they don't have the proper leverage to use the seated hamstring curl. And so what I'm gonna show you today is the, the laying hamstring curl just because I like the tension that it produces on my hamstrings. I like the feeling that I get pump wise from this compared to seated. Um, and I don't feel a lot of that tension on my lower back. I just feel like I'm able to move more weight this way or I'm able to move a proper amount of weight effectively compared to the other one where I can cheat a little bit more. So let's, let's do a couple reps of these to show you what it's like and then we'll jump on the rear delts as the final exercise for your pull deck. So it's important to note that when you're doing these, you wanna make sure that you have the, the pad on your calves in the right spot. Um, so I put it like just below my calves, but just above my ankles kinda. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to bring your feet and touch the bar to your butt, right? So it's gonna look like this. You're gonna touch the bar to your butt. Now here's the cue. When you do that, you're gonna squeeze your butt, right? It may, may seem counterintuitive because you're like, Eddie, this isn't a glute exercise. But what you're doing when you squeeze your glutes together is you're actually activating the top end of your hamstring, which is allowing it to get more work, which is producing more damage, which is creating more fatigue for it to recover from to grow. So when you do this, you want to make sure that you're not using momentum. So you're going to go up, down, and before you get to that bottom end, you're going to push again, or pull again, I should say, right? Now, if you want, if you're insane, you can not use the handles and just hold on to maybe the pads or like if it has a, a connecting piece in between, hold on to that and you will... You, 40 pounds will feel really heavy. Um, so I love to go to failure on these. I'll usually do a drop set. Um, 
and I'll do like three rounds of a drop set and then I'll do single leg at that lightest weight. And it, it's, you know, proven to show some good results, at least um, in seasons where I did it heavily. So hamstring curls, hamstring curls, hamstring curls. The whole reason for a pool day is there, there's, there's been a lot of people who have just focused on mirror muscle, right? Where they just focus on their biceps and their chest and maybe their front delts, but then they don't focus on their back because they can't see it. Other people can see it. So, you know, I don't, I don't know if we, as a, a fitness community, suffer from that anymore, but I know there's moments where I suffer from that. So I'm just being real with you guys. So we can't just train the mirror muscles. We have to train everything. For the final movement, of the pool day essentials guide is rear delt a rear delt fly and so um, you know a lot of people like to do this with dumbbells and there's nothing wrong with dumbbells but i feel like you're not getting time under tension when you use dumbbells right same reason why i like that one machine for lateral raises that i was talking about is the same reason why i like cables for rear delt because you have time under tension time under tension is essentially the amount of time that your muscle is experiencing that fatigue and that stretch and that squeeze and that tension and so when you're doing a rear cable fly with the cable through the whole range of motion your muscle is under tension it is All right, so my mic died, so I'm just going to do a voiceover of this movement as I do the exercise and then explain what I'm thinking when I'm doing these, these movements. All right, so I'm sitting here eating cinnamon toast crunch. This is future Eddie talking. We've woken up a little bit. But you can see while I'm doing these rear delt flies, I'm making sure that I'm not bending the elbow. That's, that's the key to this whole exercise. If you bend your elbow, it's going to become a tricep extension movement. But if you don't bend the elbow, then you are gonna see a significant amount of um, pain and stretch in your rear delt, right? So you wanna make sure that you're incorporating this workout into your pool days because a rear delt makes the arm look much bigger, right? Triceps are important, biceps are important, but if you want a well-rounded arm, then you need a nice rear delt. So do these. All right. So I gotta be real with you guys. I mean, I had a good workout this morning, um, but I feel like this this wasn't my best video. You know, there were a lot of variables and factors that came into play. A busy gym, just trying to find the right angles while like you know not really like being in people's way and all that stuff. Try to be respectful and uh, not be a jerk. Um, yeah, and also not having pre at the end and then getting to the end of the workout and just then having to film. I was like, I am, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Like doing those movements even at super light weights was just fatiguing. So we got a little extra work, which is nice. But yeah, in the, in the spirit of authenticity, which this, you know, this channel is all about, right? Um, yeah, I don't, th I don't feel like it's my best video. Um, you know, I, I hope that the the critique and the 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 dialogue that I offered and you know the the cues for those workouts is helpful and if it's not I'll just have to make another video about some more essential pool day movements but um, really the whole point you're creating time under tension in every movement you do um, and if you're performing those reps to failure you will succeed so these are these are some of the pool movements that I love I mean I love that compound barbell row um, where you can just build back thickness. I love that lat pull down where you can really just get that squeeze. Specifically for me at the upper portion of the lat, um, you've seen in the last videos, and if you haven't, go check those out. Um, you've seen in the last videos about how I've been working on the lower lats um, with that cable row um, in a unique way. Um, you know, biceps, easy, easy, easy way. Easy way to blow your biceps is just to do curls. Like it sounds simple and it sounds like almost boring, but sometimes the best movements for you are the simple boring ones, and that's bicep curls. And who doesn't love a good curl? Um, and then, you know, obviously the rear delt fly. Rear delt fly is huge. Um, like I said, I've been trying to grow my rear delts, and so cable rear delt fly with all that tension on the back, um, you know, you just, you, uh, you can't go wrong, you know? 
Um, and if you want to do it with dumbbell, if you feel like that's easier, if you feel like that's a more natural way for you to jump into it, great. But you know, most times I feel like you want to have you want to have more tension over that time period instead of just you know only doing 75% you know, of the movement with dumbbell. Um, and then and then lastly, doing legs with the hamstring curl, um, I think is essential for a pool day because you want to build strong legs. Whether or not you build big legs, you want to build strong legs. And so my encouragement to you is on every single lift, incorporate some legs. If you have rest days in between, don't incorporate legs. Hear me clear on this. Do not incorporate legs on, on all of your lifts if you don't have rest days in between. If you're doing a six day a week split and you'd go back to back to back and then back to back to back, don't do legs every day. That's not smart. But if you're running a split like mine where you're doing your push, your pull, your legs, and it's every other day, and your legs have enough time to recover throughout the week, then add a leg movement to your push and your pull days. But, yeah. So, with all that being said, with everything that I've shared with you today, I hope that you found this informative. And uh, we'll be back on Friday, most likely, um, with another video. Uh, and since this one was so different, I think, from what I normally do um, in terms of style, not, maybe not even style, but just like the, the time into the, the actual workout itself, um, I'll probably try to opt for more of the style I've done in the past, but we'll see. Anyway, if you're actually interested, stay tuned and I guess you'll find out what happens on Friday or Saturday when I drop that video. I hope that you eat all the food that you need to get the growth that you want. And if you are thinking about skipping your workout today, unless you're sick, don't skip it. Make time. There's always time. You can make room for a workout. All right. I'll see you guys later. Peace.